And now, by all who are able, let us rise together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. Restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now join together in the prayer of the day which we find printed in our bulletin inserts. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today, this sixth Sunday of Easter, is from the 17th chapter of Acts, beginning with the 22nd verse. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, he now commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he, whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is parts of Psalm 66. Let us read together responsibly. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our faith to serve. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let your people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings, and you will my house. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you your confidence of the fact that you the smoke of the hands. I will give you oxen and angels. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I call out to God with my mouth and praise the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in the truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. The second reading for today is from the third chapter of 1 Peter, beginning at the 13th verse. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, 
and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a pro proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels' authorities and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my, who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. This is a continuation of Jesus' farewell discourse that he is speaking to his disciples in that upper room. It is after he has washed their feet and after he has given them what we now know as the Eucharist, when he broke the bread and said, this is my body given for you. And as he passed the cup around, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. And then he said, do this in remembrance of me. And then once again he spoke about how he must be betrayed and handed over to the authorities and how he would be crucified. But on the third day he might rise again. But he could see that his disciples were greatly troubled by all of this. And so he wanted them to understand that this was all part of God's plan. And God's plan was not going to end there, but God's plan would continue forward. That as he was raised from the dead, he would one day ascend back into heaven. But he promised he would not leave his, his disciples orphans. He would not leave them to flounder. Rather, he will send someone else. What is called in John the paraclete. Now the interesting thing about the Greek usage here of the paraclete is a little bit different than what we usually hear in the other Gospels. John is the only gospel writer that uses the word paraclete. He uses it four times in his gospel and once in his letter called 1 John. 
a paraclete is basically very similar to a public defender, if you will. It is someone that you call when you need help. Someone who will give testimony to you. Someone who will try and get you off the hook, if you will. Most of the time we hear about the Holy Spirit as when Jesus came up out of the water and the Holy Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And every other reference to Holy Spirit is usually from in the word in the Greek of pneuma, which of course is word or breath. But this time, John is very specific about it, just as I believe Jesus was, because he wanted them to know that even though he was going away, he would come back. And not only that, but after he would leave again, he was going to send someone, this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Now, of course, God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So why would Jesus have to go away before he could send God the Holy Spirit? <coughs> well, think about it. God was Jesus, and Jesus was God, but Jesus was also human, and therefore he had limitations. I mean, as much as I'd like to be in two places at one time, <laughs> that's not humanly possible. And the same was for Jesus. He had those confines, that construct, that he could not be everywhere all at once. And so for the Holy Spirit to be able to do that, to be everywhere at all times, for the Holy Spirit to be indwelling within us and around us and through others and above us and below us, well, Jesus had to ascend back to the Father. But he promised he would not leave us, just as he promised those disciples. In fact, Jesus said, I will be with you even until the end of days. And that is the hope that we have. Jesus spent a lot of time telling the disciples that if you love me, you will love my Father. And if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, a lot of people think, well, it must be the Ten Commandments that Moses brought down. But we forget that Jesus had his own commandments, did he not? Let me refresh you on that. In that upper room, as I mentioned before, Jesus did something truly amazing. He washed the feet of his disciples. He did something that they would not do. Even though he was the Master and the Lord, he was the one that actually got down and washed their feet. And then he said, If I then, the Lord and Teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. That is one of his commandments. To do as I have done to you. To not only come into this world, but not to be served, but to serve others. To come into this world not to be the master of all, but to be the servant of all. I told the folks at Trinity that every time I hear being the servant of all, I can't help but remember Nathan, our youngest son, when he was, well, a lot shorter than he is now. <laughs> and of course, we always ask them to do chores. And for Nathan, asking him to do anything was quite hard. <laughs> he kind of had a mind of his own and he knew what he wanted to do. And a lot of times that was nowhere near what mom and dad wanted him to do. <laughs> And so I would say, son, can you please do whatever it was I asked him? And so he walked away and he started doing it. And I heard him say the words, that's me, servant of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, that is exactly what Christ calls us to be, a servant of the world. That is one of the commandments he gave in that upper room. He also said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now think about that statement. 
that God loved his disciples even unto death itself. That God the Son came into the world to give up his life so that we might live. He asked his disciples to show such love. And you know what? They eventually did, did they not? Eleven of those disciples ended up being martyrs to the faith. I include Stephen in that. Only one lived to old age, and that was John, who was exiled and imprisoned on the island of Patmos. They came to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Once the Holy Spirit came upon them at Pentecost, their lives changed forever. They no longer had to hide away in the upper room. Rather, that paraclete, that Holy Spirit, came among them and gave them courage. And they were able to fulfill the mission of God. Jesus told them that you are to go to all four corners of the earth to bring the good news to all people and to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That was also a commandment he gave us, was it not? If we obey his commandments, then we love him and we love the Father at the same time. If we obey. You see, that's the part about having free will that always gets us in trouble. We have to choose to do these things. And once we make that choice, especially if we do choose to follow God, we also have to realize that on our own we can do no good. So therefore, we must ask God to strengthen us, not in faith, but strengthen us in the Holy Spirit so that we might do His will. Strengthen us so that we no longer want to do our own will in this world and have our own way, but rather become the servant of the world and go in the way of God Himself. That we are to be imitators of Christ. And what is it that Christ did? He had compassion for all He came across. And Christ was the one who always reaches out to others. Christ loved people, no matter where they were from, no matter what they had done, but because they were children of God, Christ loved them. And no matter what was happening to him, no matter what the circumstance was, there was always grace and mercy. Even as he is nailed to the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as he looked down upon his mother and his servant John, his disciple, he said, Mother, here is your son. And then he looked at John and said, Here is your mother. Such mercy and grace and love was what Jesus was all about. And so therefore shall we be the same. Mercy, grace, and love. That is how we serve our God. That is how we obey His commandments. For if we are loving others and we are being merciful and gracious, we don't have to check the boxes off anymore. For we will already have been doing that. If we love God. Because what else did Jesus tell us? He went back to, well, the very early Old Testament where it was written in Deuteronomy that you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your spirit. And then he added something else to that teaching. And then you are to love your neighbor as yourself. Do you know how many times Jesus said love when he was here on earth? More times than I could count. That seems to be one of the greatest things that we hear in all of his teachings, love. And that is what we as Christians are called to do. And I sometimes have to look and see what kind of a job we're doing on that part. 
so many times when I read the news or see the news. I see so many Christians who are anything but loving, who are anything but merciful, who are anything but gracious. I see those who proclaim to be followers of Christ hating, trying to tear down rather than to build up. I see anger being spoken, not words of love, not words of caring or compassion, but rage and anger. These people are not Christians. They have been led astray by all of the false prophets that we have in this world. All of those who push the gospel of prosperity, all of those who push for alienating people and hating people. Beware the false prophets, Jesus tells us. They will come in my name, but I do not know them. We will be known as disciples of Christ by following the Holy Spirit's guidance, by loving one another as Christ has loved us. And this way, everyone will know that we are his disciples. Trust in God. Trust in the Holy Spirit. Know that whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, if it is to glorify and honor God, your prayer will be answered. Know that in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of life itself, God promises you will never be alone. And all that God has promised will come to fruition. Joshua told the people in the Old Testament that all the promises that God has made have always been fulfilled. So therefore, you need not worry. Trust in Him, and He will answer. And that is what I say to you. Trust. God will be there. He will walk each and every step of the way with us. And no matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, we can call out to Him, and He will answer. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, all the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you call all the people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing, Lord, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to all who are sick or grieving. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Amen. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abba, Father, we look to you for all things. We know that your Holy Spirit has been given to us in our baptisms. And now we ask, Father, for your Holy Spirit to be alive within us and around us and through us and others. Show us what it is that you have for us to do in this world. Give us the strength of faith and give us the strength of your Holy Spirit so that wherever you lead us, we shall follow. <coughs> Whomever we encounter, Father, help us to love. Help us to have compassion upon others. Help us to live to serve you and by serving you, let us serve others. Help us, Father, to honor your name especially in this day and age when obedience seems to be so old-fashioned to so many. Let us remember as Christ was obedient to your will, he calls us also to be obedient to your will. Let us do so lovingly and willingly, Father. Father, today we lift up to you those who are in need of healing and restoration. They are in need, Father, of your comfort and your guidance. And most of all, Father, they are in need of your presence in their lives. And so we ask for Norma, Eloise, Fran, Sue, Dick, Betty Sue, Hazel, Vera, Grady, Mervyn, Bill, Avis, Mary, 
Cindy, Lorna, Roy, Kathy, Bobby, Susan, Elaine, Linda, Betty, Veda, Elizabeth, Marlene, Sandy, Phil, Sam, Dar, Bob, Elizabeth, Bensie, Rosa, Sharon, Steph, Betty Lou, Annabelle, Legend, Larry. Heavenly Father, we ask especially today that you be with Gary as he is once more in the hospital. We pray that you send to him all of the doctors, all of the technicians and those who will care for him. We pray for swift healing and recovery. We ask for a proper diagnosis and we ask, Father, that you strengthen him in all things. We give you thanks, Father, that Barb and John are home once again and we look forward to the time when we can hear about their travels, how they will give glory to you in all that they do. And Father, we pray for Jerry and Linda as they are grieving now the loss of Chantel. Help them through this time. Let them know that we have all been baptized into the life and death of Christ and therefore we have been baptized into a resurrection like His. That our great hope is in Christ the Lord. That He came and died to save us from our sins. That He has paid the price for all of our wrong. And that one day, all who believe will be called to that heavenly home. We ask, Father, that you be with Victor and his entire family as he is now on the last days of his life here on earth. Comfort them. Let them know that it will be just a short time and we shall be together in your kingdom. But until then, Father, we ask that you take away his pain let him know your great love. Let him be surrounded not only by his earthly family, but let them be surrounded all by your intense love. Calm their anxieties and fears. Let them know your promises made have come true in Christ our Lord. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
for these gifts from the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. And in the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all of its creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Father, thy name is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat>
promise is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Go in peace. Serve the risen one. And speak to God.